Hello and welcome to the video. This video is all about an updated video to talk about this stuff here. Um, plastics, the kind of plastics that you're going to use to print in your 3D printer. Uh, this is the one behind me. Uh, this is the Fabricator 2 from Hobby King. Sadly, they don't do it anymore. A lovely little tabletop printer. I've also got an Ender 3 that I use a lot. And I print loads of stuff for the hobby all the time. It's a really great addition to the hobby. So if you like the idea of being able to design or download and just print parts um, for the hobby or around the house actually because you'll find once you have a 3D printer it gets used for pretty much everything um, and you've been thinking about filaments and what you should be getting and using I thought I'd do a follow-up video to this video that I did a couple of weeks ago this was actually about this thing here this is my 3D printable pan and tilt setup for an FPV camera it's one that I designed I briefly talk about the best plastics to use in that and there were some fantastic comments on that original video talking about the different types so some of the newer stuff like ASA so I thought what I'll do is get hold of one of these boxes from Filamentive this is one of their sample boxes got loads and loads of different plastics in here I thought what I'll do is let me go through each of these in turn and kind of talk about the plastics uh, the good stuff the bad stuff cover some of the newer stuff like ASA as well as ABS, PETG, PLA um, and also some of the more exotic stuff that's in here as well and kind of give you an idea of what to use. Again before we get too far into this my personal choice all the time for default printing of stuff is black PETG. That's a the filamentive one at the back uh, that lives there uh, some of these others get used for different little jobs depending on stuff because you also have to think about whether or not uh, a plastic is going to tolerate higher temperatures if you're going to have it in the car on a hot sunny day and you think about uv resistance and i haven't talked about those kind of things in previous videos do check out my 3d printing uh, for radio control series i'll put a link down below if you're interested in looking at this and demystifying some of it because 3d printing is a fantastic addition to the hobby and an awful lot of fun anyway let's go on the bench and go through this lovely box of plastic so the first plastic that we'll take a look at is probably the first plastic that most of us will print when you get into 3D printing, and that is something called PLA. Now, I have a number of different PLAs here from the guys at Filamentive, so there's lots of different types, but they all have a lot in common. PLA is a hard, brittle plastic in its base form, but the really cool thing is, is that it is super easy to print. Now, this is actually a bioplastic. It's not made from petrochemical. And the really nice thing is, is that when you print it, it smells sweet. Some describe it as the smell of uh, waffles cooking. And I kind of have that sweet smell when I print with it here. Now, you only need about 205 degree uh, heated end temperatures to print this thing and you don't really need a heated bed either so a lot of the cheap and cheerful printers that were knocking around five six years ago uh, are absolutely right for PLA and the nice thing is is although there are fumes that come off it because you can smell that kind of um, caramel burnt sugar kind of smell when you're printing with it um, it isn't nasty fumes but I would still recommend whenever you're doing any kind of 3D printing make sure that there is some kind of ventilation so you're not breathing in any fumes that come off any of the plastics that you print with. In terms of the benefits this stuff is super easy to print. It's the one that I would recommend if you've never printed with anything before start out with this most printers get supplied with a little bit of PLA in the box so you can get started and get everything dialed in it's dimensionally stable uh, so what I mean by that is that when it's in its liquid form versus its solid form ie melted and being printed versus when it's set up um, it doesn't change volume and that's really good it means that parts can be printed really nicely and it is a beautiful shiny plastic particularly in things like the black colors now some people talk about the fact that because it is uh, a bioplastic it's biodegradable I'm not sure I would go that far. Uh, it doesn't have any nutrients. It doesn't really degrade in soil um, and add anything to the soil. Uh, but it's definitely one of those plastics that if you're worried about the environment, it is 
a little bit better than having things like ABS and some of the others we're going to look at in a moment. There are a couple of drawbacks with PLA. The first one is it is very brittle unless you get the toughened version. So when I designed parts that were meant to be print in PLA, I found that I had to design the walls of the part to be a bit thicker, uh, the braces to have a little bit more meat so that it could survive an impact. It's not a particularly great plastic for the hobby. Uh, if you're going to have it put under any kind of stress. It's probably fine until you have a bit of a hard landing and that hard landing will actually snap the plastic because this plastic doesn't flex as such. Uh, it just kind of fails catastrophically. The other thing about this plastic is it doesn't like really warm days. If you left your plastic pieces on the back seat of the car in a nice sunny day, then you're going to have problems. Anything over about 57 degrees C, which you can get above on a really hot day inside a car, then you are going to have problems with your PLA print. And also, this is susceptible to ultraviolet too. So, not very good for printing parts that are going to be outdoors all the time. But, if you want something that's super easy to print, then this is a good idea. Now again, I've got lots of different versions here. I've got the standard base PLA from Filamentive in black silver, and also this very pretty cosmic blue, which is like a dark blue with um, silver sparkles in it. Um, also got the EPLA in black. Now the EPLA is the engineering standard PLA, uh, probably not what most hobbyists would use, but that's what that is. And then I've also got the RPLA. Now this is a reinforced PLA type that if you can only print in PLA but you want a little bit more toughness in your filament then you have this option for RPLA. Uh, again I've read on white versions here in this sample box. Then if you really want a tough print in PLA then I would use PLA Tough. Now I've got some red here. I have actually bought myself a complete spool of the PLA Tough in red. And also PLA comes in different finishes as well because PLA normally is a very shiny, glossy plastic when it's been printed, but there are PLA matte versions as well. I happen to have this stuff in gray. So even if you have an older printer that can only really print in PLA, you don't have the heated bed that you need for some of the other things we're going to have a look at in a moment, you can still print some tough parts. So if you can't get hold of a printer or a PETG or some of the other stuff we're going to have a look at in a minute, I would probably go for PLA tough. And also think about the different colors. Uh, I've got red here because I tend to print things like PLA tough for things like camera mounts. And if a camera gets ejected, if the camera's black and it's ejected into longer grass in a crash, uh, having something like the holder being bright red should hopefully help me find it rather than have to leave it and go and buy another one. Next plastic is probably my single most favorite plastic for 3D printing, PETG. PETG is much tougher than PLA. It's super easy to print as well. It's, uh, you need about 240 degrees C versus about the 205 degrees C. So you need your, print, your hot end on your printer to go and run a little bit hotter. And ideally you want some kind of printed uh, warmed print bed as well. You don't need it super hot, but it does help with adhesion. I only run mine at a kind of like 40, 50 degrees C. It just helps keep the part nice and stable. It is a really, really nice plastic to print with and again this one is nice low fumes it actually doesn't really smell of anything um, although it might be that i've been printing with this so long i can't even detect it anymore again always use extraction when you're 3d printing but this is one of those that doesn't really give off any particular smell now again this is super easy to print and super tough when printed and it will handle crashes without breaking this is my go-to for everything that i'm printing I actually have a spool of this on the back of my little 3D printer that's running all the time. It's pretty fast to print too and with those low fumes and also a nice chemical resistance, it is a really, really useful one to play with. The other massive benefit of PETG is whereas we looked at PLA in the first plastics and that is really affected by ultraviolet and higher temperatures, 
this stuff, PETG, doesn't have those same weaknesses. So it's minimally affected by UV, so it's good for outdoors, and it will also survive um, those higher direct temperatures without getting soft. So not a lot of drawbacks with this stuff. It's kind of strong like the ABSs and stuff we'll look at in a moment, but it's easy to print. You will need a hot end that's going to run about 240 degrees, although I run it sometimes a little bit less on some of the prints that I do here. And you're also going to need a printed heat, uh, heated print bed. I'd say if you can get your uh, bed up to about 40, 50 degrees C, you'll be able to print this stuff without breaking into a sweat. I know quite a few people who actually print this stuff without a heated print bed, and it works fine. Now, the stuff I've got here is PETG Black. This is a sample of basically that massive roll that I have on the back of my everyday printer. It's just fantastic. Uh, also comes in different colours, so this is green. There's also the reinforced PETG, uh, for even more strength. That's in this white colour here. And you can also get it with additives in as well. Uh, this is the carbon fibre PETG. Uh, this has a slightly dull finish when it's printed it actually looks really nice uh, the only issue with printing carbon fiber filament like this is you do need to swap your print nozzle out if you're using like a standard kind of brass print nozzle uh, the carbon fiber flex that are actually in the filament will actually wear out the hole in it so you need a stainless steel one ideally if you are going to print carbon fiber but it looks absolutely beautiful when it's printed next plastic we'll talk about then is the other one that most people have bumped into and that is abs abs is a very tough plastic it's what an awful lot of the propellers that we use in the hobby is made of and that's because it's will just take knocks and abuse without shattering or breaking. It is a lot tougher to print as it isn't dimensionally stable. As it goes to a liquid form, it actually increases slightly in volume, and then as it uh, cools and solidifies, it contracts very slightly. So the issue with that is that you need to have, again, a reasonably high hot end temperature, 245 degrees-ish, uh, but a hot print bed is essential because if it cools down then the edges of the print will peel away. I tend to use things like hairspray or uh, ABS slurry uh, to stick ABS when I'm doing ABS prints. Although to be honest I've not printed ABS for two years now because everything I've needed has been handled by PETG. Other thing about ABS is there is a higher level of fumes. Um, it does smell like burning plastic. It is not pleasant and it's one of those smells that hang around. So do make sure that if you are printing ABS that you have some kind of fume extraction or some kind of ventilation. Now the benefits are of course it is super tough when it's printed and it will handle crashes. Um, it's slightly more flexible even than PETG. It's not super flexible like one of the wacky filaments like TPU which is the kind of stuff you can print tires from but um, it is also very good in the higher temp applications so for really hot uh, situations uh, once you've got ABS printed because it needs those higher um, print temperatures anyway it's fine to to ha have outdoors in its raw form ABS uh, has low UV resistance but a lot of filaments that you find will actually have additives in them to combat that so check the details on the ABS filament that you have uh, the stuff from Filamentive has the additives in so it is better for UV uh, protection when it's been used for stuff outside also our ABS the reinforced ABS in white if you need a little bit more strength now the next one to talk about is similar to ABS, it's something called ASA, it's one that I haven't played with a lot here, but it's another very tough plastic. It's slightly easier to print than ABS because it's more dimensionally stable, that thing where it actually expands in volume when it's in liquid versus contracting when it um, cools down and goes back to a solid doesn't happen as much with ASA, so you don't have that same warping issue to the same extent. Again, you still need a high hot end temperature, about 240 degrees C, and a hot bed is really important. But this is still very tough when it's printed, very good in high temp applications, 
And the other really exciting thing about ASA is it's the most UV resistant filament in 3D printing. So if you are printing things for outdoors that you want to be tough and long lasting and survive, you know, the bright sunshine in winter and the UV and the higher temperatures, this is a fantastic filament for that. Last filament to talk about is uh, one that I probably wouldn't use for the hobby. Uh, well, actually, no, that's not true. I might use it to print grips or handles for stuff. This is wood filament. What it is is actually a PLA plastic, but 40% of the volume is made up from recycled wood fibers. Because it's PLA, super easy to print. See the first plastic that we had a look at. Uh, and the nice thing is it does smell like warm wood when it is actually printing. Some of the cool benefits of this, it can be finished and sanded and stained like wood. And it looks absolutely fab. It does feel nicer in the hands. It does feel like a wooden part. And it's perfect for very intricate smaller pieces that would be an absolute pig to carve. As I said, maybe not one I'll use in a hobby, but the smell does make me feel like I'm back at my first summer job in a sawmill. And there are some times, particularly when it's for a tactile thing like a grip, where actually a wood filament could be a good choice. So hopefully that was useful to run through those filament types. Again, there are other ones that are out there, some slightly weirder and wackier stuff. The ones that you're going to run across the most in the radio control side of 3D printing, hopefully I have covered. My personal favourite, as I said at the beginning, is black PETG. But don't just print in black. If you're going to be printing it for a part that may get ejected in a crash, and you definitely want to want to be able to find that afterwards. Uh, a lot of the older action cameras and things like GoPros tend to be black. Uh, having that mount printed in a nice bright red or an orange can really help you find it after a crash and not waste hundreds of pounds. Trust me, I speak from experience. So thanks again for watching. Hope that was useful. And as always, happy flying and printing. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.